I think I don't have to give an introduction why we believe CDAT cells are really important and why it's important maybe to try to target those because we do know that there's a temporal association of CDA T cell response and uh, viral clearance in early infection, and we know from depletion studies that indeed CDA T cells are the main effector cells. If you take away CDA T cells, the virus stays at high titers until CDA T cells return. So clearly, there seems a clear role for HPV-specific CDA T cells, and it seems wise to aim at few virology cure approaches uh, to target them. But I think there are a few questions. We already discussed them this morning, and I'd like to discuss them very briefly with you. Number one, what about these T cell responses during chronic infection? How do they look like? And of course, then with the last two, three slides, what's the best approach maybe for T cell restoration? So for the first question, what, that, what, what do these two cells look like during chronic infection? Uh, we looked in a large cohort of patients, most of them being in this inactive carrier state, but still a few with high viral loads. And in order to not bias ourselves to the few previously identified uh, epitopes that we do know, and we know we have uh, a few HLA2 predicted epitopes, but in comparison to HPV, uh, HCV and HIV, in the case of uh, hepatitis B, we really have only identified uh, uh, a small amount of uh, peptides, and therefore we use the approach of these overlapping peptides um, that cover the whole uh, HPV proteins, and then also try to identify the epitopes responsible for the response and also performed HLA restriction. And what we found is that by this approach, uh, we were able to detect HPV-specific CDA T cell responses in about half of the patients. So at least with this functional robust assay, half of the patients with chronic HPV infection do not have a T cell response, and this is how such a T cell response looks like. However, what we also found is that there is a specific lack of HPS antigen-specific CDA T cell responses in chronic infection. So we found response against polymerase, against core, against X, but not against the surface protein. And this is specific for the chronic phase because when we then looked in patients during resolved infection or patients during acute infection, we were able easily to identify these S antigen specific T cell responses. So there seems to be a specific lack of these responses, at least by the early spot assay, that is unique to persistent infection. Now, of course, by the early spot approach, we are looking for T cell responses based on their ability to produce cytokines. A different approach is to use tetramers and also to use enrichment strategies for tetramers, as is shown here. So, for example, you see this is a very weak response detectable in one patient ex vivo, but after enrichment, magnetic enrich, um, enrichment ex vivo, you see significant clouds detectable for core, for poll, but again, quite difficult for envelope. So for most patients with core and poll, we were able to identify now with this, uh, with this approach, tetramer approach, that identifies again CDA T cells without, with, independent of their function. We found core and polymerase specific CDA T cells, but again, only a few envelope specific CDA T cell responses. So that we can sum up this part that indeed there seems to be a specific lack in the functional level at least, but also just with respect to the frequency of these HPS antigen specific CDA T cells in chronic infection. So now how do these cells, these HPV specific CDA T cells uh, look like? And uh, for that, I think it's important to um, come back to what we discussed already this morning that we know that these HPV specific CDA T cells have been suggested to be exhausted, however, there is uh, more data coming up that exhaustion is not only defined by the expression of exhaustion markers and not only by the functional impairment, but also that uh, exhausted CDA T cells um, have different subsets. And uh, we could, for example, uh, show that in HCV, that in chronic HCV infection, we have um, cells that are also, the, all these gray bars are now cells that are antigen-specific cells. All of them are PD-1 positive but some of them are positive also for memory marker. So they have both. They have a memory-like phenotype, this PD-127, and this highly exhausted phenotype, which is PD-1. And a few cells downregulate again this memory phenotype. And when we look in more detail at these two populations, um, this um, PD-1 highly positive, CD-127 negative population is severely exhausted, 
in contrast to this memory-like uh, phenotype that is not as exhaustion and is characterized by the expression of TCR1 as a transcription factor that um, um, also shows cells within this memory-like uh, phenotype, so cells that are sustained during chronic infection. And even importantly, these cells are even maintained after antigen elimination. So when you take away HCV, antigen, you have a maintenance of these memory-like CD8 T cells, as depicted here, but you lose this highly exhausted CD8 T cell population. Importantly, and we discussed this already this morning, these cells, however, <clears throat> are not going into the memory phenotype, meaning losing PD-1. So we have a T cell population that is still has some features of exhaustion, especially being PD-1 positive. So to answer that question, <clears throat> From this morning, I think it will be very difficult to really have a complete uh, restoration of these cells. We have a maintenance of memory-like cells that do function better than highly exhausted CD8 T cells. However, they're not classical memory cells. So to sum this up in a very simple scheme, so if you take away antigen, you lose these highly exhausted CD8 T cells and you maintain memory-like cells, but you do not get back classical memory cells that you do see after spontaneous uh, resolution in the case of HCV. So of course, the obvious question was, how does it look like now in hepatitis B? Do we have the same two subs? And here we had the surprise finding that if you compare HCV here on the left, where you do see clearly these highly exhausted cells, that in HPV, if it's core or pol, most of these HPV-specific CD8 T cells were in the memory-like uh, section, only few exhausted cells. And we indeed even found differences, and I come back to that in a minute, between core and pol. So more cells of a polymerase are exhausted, more cells of core are um, in the memory-like phenotype. So on an epitope-specific level, antigen-specific level, differences between core and pol. And we cannot do the same kind of assay for S-antigen, because S-antigen, even by tetramers, is not really detectable, as I showed you before. So we really have an antigen-specific uh, T-cell failure and chronic HPV infection. So coming back to the question, are now um, HCV-specific CD8 T-cells, because they are more pronounced in this exhausted phenotype, are they indeed more highly exhausted compared to HPV? And there are many different markers you could look at to uh, address that. One really interesting marker that has come up over the years, and there's also ongoing work from different groups studying that in the moment, um, is TOX. So TOX has been shown to be one of the central transcription factors regulating T-cell exhaustion early on in different studies. And indeed, when we now looked at TOX in HPV and HCV, first on the overall percentage and then also in the MFI, I think the first important question is, HCV is more exhausted than HPV. Even after DA therapy, HCV-specific CD8 T cells maintain in the TOX phenotype, again pointing out, despite the fact that we do have some other changes that they look like, like memory cells in the end, they are uh, still more likely in this exhausted uh, phenotype. And also in the MFI, it becomes clear that these, uh, in the intensity of the staining, that HCV-specific CD8 cells before treatment are most exhausted, but that HPV-specific CD8 T cells, if treated or not, are less exhausted compared to um, hepatitis C virus-specific CD8 T cells, something which I found in the beginning surprising because I would have expected that with the high antigen load, for example, S-antigen, present, we would probably have seen uh, higher uh, levels of exhaustion in um, HPV versus HCV. So coming back to, to the difference between core and pol. So we have these two differences. Of course, we ask, uh, is this also reflected by function? And indeed it is. So core-specific CD8 T cells are more in the memory-like cell population, and they do proliferate significantly better compared to uh, uh, polymerase. And we could directly link the frequency of memory-like cells to the expansion um, capacity, so suggesting these cells are really doing well. In contrast to pol, where we did not find such a clear correlation. So that thinks that expansion of core, but not pol-specific CD8 T cells, is linked to the memory-like phenotype. So what are the differences? If you think about expansion of CD8 T cells, there are two pathways of uh, two components that contribute to expansion. Number one is proliferation. Number two is that survival, that they um, do not die. So first we looked at, poly we looked at uh, proliferation, we looked at the proliferative capacity, and we looked at TCF1, which is the marker I already 
talk, talked about, and you do see there's no difference between core and pol regarding the expression of TCF1. So it's a similar expression, and we cannot really explain the differences just based on the expression of uh, TCF1. However, when we looked at survival, we found a significant difference. So core-specific CD8 T cells showed a high expression of PCL2 and, uh, compared to pol, and the decreased PCL2 expression of memory-like pol-specific CD8 T cells uh, directly correlated with the decreased expansion capacity, suggesting that the lack of survival really is a factor that contributes to the lack of expansion of pol, but not core-specific CD8 T cells. So I think what this data shows is that two interesting findings. Number one, that in HPV, a majority of cells, irrespective of antigen, are in a memory-like phenotype. They're not this classically highly exhausted CD8 T cell responses that we do see in HCV and HIV. And there are still differences between core and pol, so better expansion of core, uh, they are less exhausted and they have a higher frequency of uh, memory-like cells and the pol-specific CD8 T cells that do expand less well are more severe exhausted and also have a um, disturbed expression of uh, BCL2, a low expression of BCL2. And it's interesting to note that uh, I think that Georg Lauer looking at the same epitopes during acute and after acute infection come up to very similar differences between core and pol that have not been uh, previously, um, I think, recognized in the field and are now uh, published uh, side by side. And this is important. Um, I think, yes, because, of course, when we come back to the questions we asked earlier today, what is the best approach to stimulate HPV-specific CD8 T cells? We have talked about, the of course, uh, that we should get rid of antigen, that we have different approaches to get rid of S antigen, and we be probably believe best that if we have less S antigen, we some, at some level T cell responses are coming up, although I think we really have not understood at all why, for example, S antigen-specific CD8 T cell responses are so completely deleted and why we do have these differences between core and pol. But we have different approaches. The vaccine therapy, we can use checkpoint inhibitors, and we will hear about them in the next presentation, and we can use T-cell engineering. And just looking at these three epitopes, uh, with envelope-specific CD8 T-cell responses, which you do, you do not find, I think probably antigen reduction maybe combined with vaccination would be a good approach, and uh, Adam gave a nice introduction about this this morning. COA, which is less exhausted than um, uh, POL, and which is higher on TCF1, and TCF1 is not only a marker for memory-like cells, but it also defines cells that best respond to the PD-1 uh, blockade. So maybe these core-specific CD8 T cells might respond better to a PD-1 blockade. Polymerase, however, that is more severely exhausted, where more cells are on the way to undergo a cell death. Maybe these are the cells that would uh, proliferate better from cytokines for their survival, and we talked uh, already about IL-12 in uh, uh, this morning as maybe one option in that context. But I think that's something really which makes uh, our thinking about immune therapies a little bit more complex, that we really carefully have to think about the mechanisms of uh, CD8 T cell failure, that in contrast to HCV, such a thing has not been reported in HCV, seems to be really antigen uh, dependent in the case of uh, HPV and maybe may, maybe very different mechanisms of uh, T cell failure, maybe um, tolerance versus exhaustion versus uh, lack of survival are really uh, playing important roles that have to be considered. So epitope specific CD T cell failure may lead to specific uh, novel therapeutic strategies. And with this, I would like to end. Anita Schucht did the work on HPV, Dominic Wieland the work on uh, HCV, the work on the early spot was done in the group of uh, Christoph Norman Heffelin, and with this I thank you for your attention.